Hey guys, Nibble here. Today we got to look at the Miyagi for you. We got Takagi on the screen there. I had to boost him up to a full range build uh, to get the full effect of the ship. I'll explain why here in a moment. Uh, but first I want to show you the armor schemes. Now we're going to have a lot of 19 millimeter plating, which from a battleship's perspective, there's no armor there. You can't protect yourself. Uh, but look at the deck armor. Okay, we got a light green there. And over on the Congo orange, okay? So we actually have better armor schemes on the tech tree ship as well as pretty much every other stat that you can imagine is better on the tech tree ship. Barring maybe one or two. Congo, we got 54,100 health. Miyogi, 45,700. Oof. Two less guns. We got a 4 by 2 uh, layout on the Congo and same caliber guns and everything, just 3 by 2 So we're missing two guns, one turret. Range, what happened here? Congo... Uh, when I put this build on, we get 17 kilometers Miyogi. 15.3, holy god, when we got a ship that can't defend itself, here basically it's designed to be played like the Champagne or the Nagato at max range, you know, the backline Betty type play style. Uh, intriguing for some, but uh, unfortunately we don't have the range to do it. Imagine getting slapped around by Fusos that can outrange you by 2 kilometers and absolutely crap all over you. That's going to be the experience with the Miyogi. Ooh, that sounds like fun. Same reload, 30 seconds. Traverse better on this one, of course, 24.7 compared to 31 on the Congo. So good traverse in either way. Uh, better damage by about 220 on the Congo. So functionally not that huge of a difference. AA, better on the Congo. 45 rating there, 29 here. Oh, boy. Same speed. Uh, slightly better turn circle. 7.30 compared to 7.20, and better rudder shift. We got 12.9 compared to 15.6. Roughly the same detection. This one's got 0.1 kilometers more detection. So very hard ship to play here as we're trying to convey. Uh, basically, any battleship that hits any of those uh, green sections on the, on the ship, the 19 millimeter sections, uh, you're going to take damage, right? You can't protect yourself. And, of course... Like I noted a moment ago, most of the Tier 4s, uh, I believe almost all the Tier 5s can outrange you, and a good chunk of the Tier 3s even, probably about 30-40% of the Tier 3s can outrange you. And most of my ships are not max range builds like this one. Keep in mind, I, I very rarely would ever put that on here. and didn't even normally have it on with the Japanese line, but I uh, needed every little ounce of help that we could get now this game isn't going to blow your mind or anything i think it's a decent battleship game but i, I got five games in with this ship uh the teams tonight they're engaged in a hardcore battle to the death to see who can uh, have the entire team wiped out fastest i think the record was three and a half uh, minutes uh congratulations to that particular blue team that was uh, quite impressive uh but other than that we're not getting any sort of cooperation so rather than play a ship that i don't really want to play on teams who I don't want to play with tonight, we're just going to show you this kind of more run-of-the-mill game. Farragut, now he cut up the middle. He recognized, okay, uh, the the quarterback, if you want to call it the battleships, that are, they're unblocked. Okay, so he's going right for us. Obviously, he's trying to torp. I'm trying to angle away from the Fuso to the north primarily, and then I'm keeping an eye on this guy. I'm not really worried about the Farragut torping me, to be honest with you. If he hits me, he hits me, but... Uh, you know, we'll we'll give him a fair shake at it. So we got him selected. Uh, the second airs will go off here. That'll help us out quite a bit. And we fired the AP shots. We could stick with AP if we want, but why not? We'll switch over to HE just for uh, good time's sake. So we'll see if we can get him off here. We slammed on the brakes. He's like, oh, crap. We already missed the Torps. Uh, the suicide launch isn't going that great. They very rarely do, but uh, the Destroyer players don't seem to learn that lesson very readily. So we're going to go ahead and try and give him a whack here. Luckily, we've got some nice uh, teammates chiming in with the guns as well. Boom, there goes about 40% of his health or so. And the teammates in the secondaries continue to pile on. Farragut's not going to last long. He's trying to disengage with the smoke there. Uh, almost gets away with it. Uh, but looks like... Uh, nope, he got him there. The Aoba. Either fired right before he disappeared or got him with a blind fire shot. Either way, he's dead. And... No harm, no fall. In fact, we didn't take any damage from him whatsoever. So, uh, not the best destroyer play, but a very common one nonetheless. 
HEs in the barrels, I might as well discharge that and then go ahead and switch over to AP. Now, the one good thing about this uh, ship is the guns. Okay, you can get some ripping shots for sure. And I don't play a lot of Congo, so I'm not going to say this definitively, but I do believe this one seems more accurate. Okay. Now, that might be just because of the build. I've been switching around a little bit, uh, going for more range and accuracy, whatever. But, uh, nevertheless... It seems pretty good. In fact, we've got a few dev strikes in the few games that we play today. Tearing these low-tier cruisers to shreds. And that's kind of what we're going to be doing a pretty good job at here. The thing you got to keep in mind, though, is this World, World of Warships Legends. Almost every game you're going to have five battleships, which means almost every game you're going to have five ships you can't defend yourself against. Uh, most games you're going to have a carrier. And again, the AA is not amazing on this thing. Especially when compared to, compared to the Tech Tree counterpart. And then you're going to have, you know, anywhere from the rest, one or two, to the rest of the ships are all destroyers. So if you get the cruisers, and I did have a couple games where we had a lot of cruisers. Um, they didn't last long enough to make a video out of them. But again, dev strikes aplenty if you get the right targets. And even some battleships, you can get some good rippers on those as well. So the problem, the range, the lack of ability to protect yourself against the battleships, well, that's an issue. Here we're taking a risk. I'm trying to disengage from this Texas. We're going to have to take one shot in the side. Uh, we do have full health, more or less, so I'm thinking we can get away with it. It's possible we get uh, otherly destroyed there. Not a bad result. We only lost about a quarter of our health. And now we're getting the majority of our firepower into uh, the guy. And this is, we have three turrets, two of them in the back. So it's kind of a kiting uh, setup. Another check mark in the backline Betty category. That's just basically how the ship is designed to be played. I think they probably just plugged in the wrong ranges. Uh, I think if you give it two, three more kilometers, then my assessment of the ship would change. It's still, I don't like playing fragile ships at long range like the Champagne or the Nagato, but at least it's a viable uh, strategy. So hopefully they'll buff it or uh, reset it up as it was probably supposed to be intended to be played. But as it is a close range uh short range ship with good guns and horrible armor it's not that enticing so anyway uh as of right now i'm not going to put a strong buy recommendation on this one there's just other tier four ships that i'd like to play you know there's a lot of tech tree battleships i'd rather play you certainly got the gulio you got the texas oklahoma uh you know pretty much all the other <laughs> tier four battleships in my opinion would be more enjoyable this one as currently constituted so if you want it, if it sounds interesting to you, go ahead and get it, but uh, I'm not really digging it personally. So anyway, getting back into the game here, we got A, we got B, uh, controlled, captured, and the score, huge. Okay, we're up, obviously, and we're on the weak side. We got uh, we killed the main force that went into C, but then these two uh, battleships that spawned in the center north, they came over to support. And we've just been basically trying to slow them down. In times we're on the overload, when the enemy's overload, that's what we're going to try and do. Now, luckily for us, the Texas uh, was mostly blocked. And I, as soon as we saw we could block him, we intentionally moved forward. That meant he couldn't shoot us. Terrain, I don't know that much about it. I don't think it's a super strong battleship. But I figured we could fare a little bit better against the Terrain than the Texas, which I know could absolutely wreck this armor scheme. Uh, but And the side benefit is instead of two battleships that could potentially shoot us, then we only had one. Okay, and by the way, he's also been shooting other targets as well, so we're getting away with this. But just keep an eye on these shots. You know, if it uh, hits upper mid-hull when we're angled like this, we'll block it. Lower hull, you know, go back to the armor scheme. The belt armor is worse than the upper hull armor for some reason. Uh, there's a shot through the nose. And then any any shot that hit us in the nose or the rear, those would basically be... Uh, penetrations with damage so again not not very easy we're going to try and be baiting the shots into the side of the ship angled the side of the ship whenever possible uh but that's easier said than done okay so now we're spotted here we got a destroyer and a carrier carrier we can't do anything about we don't care about anyways but we did note briefly okay the torps were visible on the screen there and then we are continuing to be spotted of course the carrier is not spotting us here and these are kind of clues that we want to be practicing utilizing as a battleship right uh, you want to move beyond petrified and terrified of the destroyers to 
understanding, okay, this is where the guy probably is, and this is what he's probably trying to do, okay? He's got two plays right now. He's got three plays. He can go all the way south to the corner, run for his life. He can go back and defend C, or he can make a beeline and a, try and suicide toward me. He's a destroyer player, so I assume he's trying to kill me. And we were backing up there, kind of turning our ship lazily, slammed on the gas, and now we can assume he's probably already missed, right? Because we were kind of trying to bait a launch with, by showing him some broadside. And there go the torps. Now I'm hoping he gets frustrated and shoots like a lot of uh, newer destroyer players will do. They see, oh, I missed the torpedoes. I'm going to try and gun down that 30,000 HP on that battleship, even though I only get 500 damage every once in a blue moon every five seconds or so. And that's the typical thinking. But he does move into C and then the game ends anyway. So uh, that's a look at the Miyogi for you. Uh, not hugely recommended on my part. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, consider subscribing. Questions, comments, leave below. See you later.